In this lesson, we're going to be making connections between Pascal's triangle and combinations. Also, we're going to use combinations to find any value in Pascal's triangle. And lastly, we're going to use combinations to find coefficients in binomial expansions. First, we're going to start with an activity, though, here. And we're going to consider a situation where we start with two people, three people, and the group get, keeps getting bigger. And we count how many fist pumps there are if every person fist pumps every other person in the group exactly once. All right, so if we've got two people in the group, clearly we just need one fist pump. Two people and one fist pump connecting the two of them. All right, if we have three people, well, let's see, we could have a person one and two fist pump, two and three fist pump, and one and three fist pump for a total of three. If we have four people, let's see, let's let those people be represented by dots. Person one can fist pump person two, three, and four. And person two, um, already fist pumped one, so they also, also have to do three and four. And then the only one left is three and four, and we count one, two, three, four, five, six. And this should be looking familiar to something we did before. Remember this activity where we were just drawing all the lines? Well, every line represents a fist pump. And so when we had one, two, three, four, five, six dots, that's six people, for a total of 15 fist pumps. If we had five people over here, there were 10 fist pumps. I'm just going to transfer those numbers in like so. Now, this is really a combinations problem. What we're combining each time is two people. We're figuring out how many combinations of two people are there because a fist pump is done between two people. And so each line connects two people, and each line represents a fist pump. So in this first one, we have two people, and we're finding how many combinations of two we can have, which is only one. And the next, we have three people, and we're figuring out how many pairs or combinations of two people we can have, and we have three. One, two, three. Here we have a group of four, and again, fist pumps involve two people at a time. So how many pairs of people do we have to fist pump? Well, it's six. If we have five people in the group, then there are 10 fist pumps, each fist pump representing choosing two people from the group. And then lastly here we have 6C2. All right, so these numbers we noticed before were in Pascal's triangle. And so we can go in here and along this column where we see the numbers we just saw in our chart, we can say, oh, well, this one equal, equals C 2C2. This one is 3C2. This is 4C2, 5C2, we see the pattern, 6C2. So if I had seven people, there would be 21 fist pumps. All right, another example we had done on that first investigation was the soccer team where we had um, three reserves, Ali, Bob, and Kel, and we looked at how many ways could we pick none of them. Well, here we have three options, and we're picking none of them. There's one way. If we have these three guys and we're picking one of them, there are three options. We've got these three guys and we're picking two of them, there are also three options. And that's because every time we pick two, we have not picked this other one. So it's kind of the same. Picking two is kind of the same as not picking one, which is not different from just picking one. All right, so we get the same number. That's why we have a symmetry. And lastly, 3C3 is where we're picking all of them. There's only one way to pick all of them. All right, so the only thing that changed, oh, let's take a, those numbers, 1, 3, 3, 1, and take a look, where do they appear in Pascal's triangle? Right here, 1, 3, 3, 1. And so we can replace those with 3C0, this is choosing no one, 3C1, choosing one, 3C2, and 3C3. We also did this one here, where now we had four guys, Ali, Bob, Cal, and Diego, and we had the ways of choosing none of them. So four choose zero. Here, four choose one. Four choose two. I had the most options. Four choose three. And four choose four. And when we did this activity, that one, four, six, four, one, we saw in Pascal's triangle right there. Oops, not three this time. It's on four. Four C zero. Four C one. Four C three here, we already filled that one in, and four C four. All right, so now um, here's a bigger version of Pascal's triangle, and I want you to see what we filled in here was row three, 
and row 4 is right there. And we should recognize some patterns. This up here, by the way, is actually row 0. It equals 0C0, which equals 1. And because there is one way to choose no one or nothing from nothing. If you have nothing and you're choosing nothing, there's just one way to choose it. All right. Um, here I've got row 1 and row 2. And you'll see on the outsides here, we've got 1C0, 2C0, 5C0, 6C0, 7C0. And those are all ones because there's only one way to choose no one. Over here, these are the combined numbers. 0C0, 1C1, 2C2, 3C3, 4C, 5C5. And there's only one way to choose everyone. You know, if you've got six and you're choosing all six, there's just one way to do it. But in between, we get all the interesting ones, and they just go up. So in row one, we've got 2C1 here. And I could, for instance, take row seven and complete it all the way across. All right, so this is helpful in problems like this. Let's say we're asked to give the first five numbers in the 12th row of Pascal's triangle, and I can do this without writing out any of the previous rows because I know the first number is 12C0. The next one's 12C1, followed by 12C2, then 12C3. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, one more. 12C4, those are the first five numbers. I don't need a calculator for these first two because I just know the first number is 1 and the 12th row, the next number is 12. But now I can pull up my calculator to figure out the others. So 12, math, over to combinations, 2, oops, not 22. Let's get back, there we go, delete. Okay, 12C2 is 66. Bring this up again. I can just hit second entry to make this go faster. All I need to do is change the 2 to a 3, 220, and then um, second entry again. Change that 3 to a 4, 495. I've got the first five numbers in the 12th row of Pascal's triangle. All right, now I want us to make that connection, because remember, we would expand a plus b using Pascal's triangle. Here are the coefficients, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And I want us to see that these numbers um, are combinations. So this we could think of as 5c5, because a is to the fifth. This one is 5c4, where a is to the fourth. Here we've got 5C3, A is to the third. And by the way, it's a 5 because we had a 5 right there, okay? 5C2 matches up with the 2. This is 5C1, because we got a 1 there. And this is 5C0. Now you might be saying, well, this is backwards of how we did it when we grabbed it from Pascal's triangle. But since we have symmetry, um, we can write it either way. This is the same as 5C0, which matches up the exponent on B, because there is no B here. 5C1 is the same number, and B is to the first. 5C2 matches up with the 2 there. 5C3 matches up with the 3 here. 5C4 matches up with the 4 here, and 5C5. So you can actually match up either the exponent on A or B because we have that symmetry. I read it forward, it's 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. I read it backwards, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. All right, so now we're going to use this idea in order to find the coefficients to m plus b to the 12th. And we're not going to write out Pascal's triangle or multiply this out. We're just going to use our new knowledge of combinations. So here we have a 12, which means when I figure this out, it's going to be from the 12th row. So it's going to be 12c. I can just take the power on m. All right, so let's go in here, pull up our calculator, and so I have 12 already there, so I'm going to go second entry because I've got most of it there. 12, C, 10, and there it is, 66. All right, then um, let's do this one, which is going to be 12, C, 6. Either exponent's going to be 6, so that's only one way to do that one. Change that 10 to a 6. 
for the bet zero. There we go. Our coefficient is 924. Here I can do 12C1. And if I hit second entry and I go 1, I get 12. And of course that makes sense because if the, remember the row starts out 1, then 12, like we said right here. It's 1, then 12. And 66, we just saw that number, 12C2. That makes sense because there was a 2 here. All right, so m to the 12th, well, that's the very first term. Its coefficient is just 1. But if I wanted to do it in my calculator, I could have done 12c12. Um, this one, I would do 12c9. I don't think we've done that one, but it would equal 12c3. And I think we did do that one back here. So 12, there it is, 220. And this one is 12C2, but it's also equal to 12C10, which we did over here. So that's 66. Again, I could have put them in my calculator again, but I knew I had the numbers ready to go. All right, so in our last problem, what we're going to do is expand this H plus T to the fourth and then make some connections about um, tossing coins. All right, so let's start off with we need um, row four. So I've done this so much, I know it's just one, four, six, four, one. So I've got one H to the fourth, because H gets all its powers there. Then four, H goes down to three, T to the first, plus six, H goes down to two, T is up to two, plus four, H to the first, T to the third, and lastly, one T to the fourth. All right, so I've expanded it, but here's the really cool thing. This is connected to if I toss a coin four times. Toss a coin four times. Okay, so I want us to see. This first term basically tells us there is one way to get four heads. Okay, the next one tells us there are four ways to get heads three times and tails once. And just to show you, I mean, it could be heads, tails, tails. Oh, wait, wrong way around. We said heads three times. So let me do that again. So it would look like this. Heads, um, heads, heads, tails. Or heads, heads, tails, heads. Or heads, tails, heads, heads, or tails, heads, heads, heads. But we, I didn't, wasn't asked to list them out, but I know there are four ways and it matches up, all right? So then the next thing tells us there are six ways, six right here, heads is squared, so six ways to get heads twice and tails twice. So clearly we're up to four, there are four ways to get heads once and and um, let's see, tails three times. And then of course the last term is the one way, one way to get tails four times. All right, this is um, what you should know, need to know in order to do the homework, which is a worksheet today.